Doctor Who is back. It's finally back. Series 11 has been a long time coming and it's about time. Episode 1, The Woman Who Fell to Earth, aired last night and well, wow. I'm Rich from WhatCulture.com and let's up those downs. Spoilers ahead, obviously. So first up, let's talk about Jodie Whittaker. Just Jodie Whittaker. I had complete faith in her, and it's safe to say that she knocked it out of the park. There is always that inherent fear with a new showrunner, a new doctor, a whole new era, but uh, it looks like it's in pretty safe hands. Now, it doesn't mean there won't be a dull note later on in the series, but we will cross that bridge when we get to it. If we get to it. Next up, Madam. The Doctor's gender is not a focal point. There was that concern since her casting was pandering to political correctness, but the Madam scene is pretty much all we see acknowledging that casting. Hopefully this series won't be as chock full of social commentary like the last one, although if it's touched upon in the same way that the Doctor punches that bloke in thin ice for being racist towards Bill, and that's about the extent of it, then I think that's okay from time to time. Finally, her characterization. She has this sort of tenant eccentricity paired with this Matt Smith, look at me, I'm an alien, therefore I'm weird, but on a very, very diluted scale, which is absolutely a good thing, because Doctor Eleven being all alien and weirdy on Earth did get a bit grating after a bit of time. Jodie absolutely nails that comedic weirdness and she's already looking to be a truly magnificent Doctor. Big up. Now we did know that Chibnall and co were going all out to make Doctor Who look pretty good, but I mean, the new lighting, the new cameras, the new lenses, the new cinematography, this is the best Doctor Who has ever looked. Remember when you watched Day of the Doctor for the first time and you could see that the BBC had pumped a ton of money into this because it looked really nice. We are hitting that aesthetic for every single episode this series. And that's brilliant. Up. Next up, we've finally been introduced to Graham, Yaz, and Ryan, the Doctor's new companions, and they are normal. Very, very normal. Not a single hint of there being some mass universal significance surrounding them. Hopefully a trait that died back in series 10. Also, it's kind of nice to see that they're out with the Doctor purely by accident. No, do you want to come with me speech at the end of the episode? Because I mean, none of them seem that keen. The fact that Yaz is like, is it always like this for you, makes it think, she definitely doesn't want to go with the Doctor, and lo and behold, they're now stuck in space. The fact that they're out there now, supposedly against their wishes, should play to a very interesting dynamic in the coming season. Up. So this wouldn't be an episode of Doctor Who without a hide-behind-the-sofa villain, and we got one. Oh, we got one. Simshar of the Stanza, although the Doctor either completely misunderstands or most likely is completely taking the piss and calls him Tim Shaw. Tim Shaw. So this individual comes from a warrior race, came to Earth in a space-traveling ice gem, is very cold, subsequently bright blue, and uses the teeth from his victims as some sort of gruesome vajazzle for his face. Up. Turns out he's on Earth to find one live human to take back to his planet as some sort of weird trophy. Definitely kicking off the series in a dark tone. Maybe too dark. So while Tim Shaw is traversing Sheffield trying to find this human, he is killing people on the way, and most of the time it feels kind of pointless. I understand it's there to make him look more menacing and to get more teeth for his weird face, but sometimes it just felt kind of unnecessary. I mean, especially with that security guard, the granddad, who obviously doesn't get to speak to his grandchildren very often, and then he just dies for doing his job. Ooh, right in the feels. Mm, might have to give that a down. <laughs> however, however. That piss said throwing salad on Tim Shaw? Sure? Excellent. Up. Now the fact that the series was opening really, really dark was already hinted on in the early reviews for the episode, and I don't really think that's a bad thing. It took me back to watching Eccleston for the first time. It was scary, it was dark, it was brooding, but there was that little glimmer of hope in the form of the Doctor. Let's look at it this way. Here's Doctor Who. Here's Torchwood. This is where series 11 sits. And I think that's a really, really great tone. If they stick to this kind of dark, scary, like really quite uneasy feel to the show, it's gonna be getting weekly ups. So up. So something we haven't seen masses of in the series since the Tenant era is the Doctor making stuff and bits and pieces out of various knickknacks. I mean, who can forget the machine that goes ding when there's stuff? In episode one, we see the Doctor build something to take down the big electric hairball, to build a teleporter to take her back to the TARDIS, and best of all, her sonic screwdriver. There's no, the TARDIS just spits out a new one out of the console simply because the Doctor has a sonic screwdriver. She builds one because she needs it. And I think that is excellent. I'm hoping to see more of this cobbled together machinery the Doctor's gonna use throughout the course of the series. So, 
up. So since the first episode ran for 65 minutes and the remaining nine episodes in the series are running for 50, there's a lot of time to tell a good story, which means hopefully there's gonna be no more lightning fast Moffat conclusions. Hopefully. The Woman Who Fell to Earth is a slow burning mystery, not only in terms of what the villain's motives are, the characters that you're with, and especially the Doctor. Everything slowly builds and we slowly get more of an idea about the villains, about the companions, about the Doctor as the episode goes on, all culminating in a pretty amazing episode overall, but there was one duff note, and that was Grace's death. Now, in case you don't know, Grace is Ryan's nan, who is also married to Graham Bradley Walsh's character, and the dynamic between Graham and Ryan isn't that great, but Grace is there to sort of hold them together. However, she dies right at the end of the episode, kind of pointlessly. After Tim Shaw has been defeated, she still dies. Now, this was pretty much guaranteed to be happening because we haven't seen anything of her in any of the marketing, so we all knew at the back of our minds something was going to happen to Grace, and lo and behold, she died. It just felt a bit flat, a bit pointless. Although, it did open up this new depth to Bradley Walsh's character, you know, about his chemo, about his cancer, about his, his approach to life now that he's met Grace and also lost Grace. So, it should be interesting in the future, but still, didn't really need to be killed off. It felt a bit odd. Down. Another thing that was a bit of a shame was the lack of title sequence. Now, this was confirmed before the episode's airing, but it's still getting a down because I just really wanted to see it. I wanted to see the new logo in action. I wanted to hear the new theme. At least we'll see it next week. Although it did make this entire episode feel like that two or three minutes before the title sequence in a normal episode, like a big old introduction. And to be honest, that really, really worked. And at the end of the day, we got to hear the theme at the end of the episode anyway. So do you know what? Damn retracted. Speaking of themes, Murray Gold has been at the helm of Doctor Who's music since 2005, all the way up to the end of series 10, and he has done an amazing job. But there was a part of me that thought it was getting a bit stale towards the end of Capaldi's series. The overuse of the Doctor's theme just really grated with me, so having somebody new in has been incredible. Now Sagan Akinola is at the wheel, and the music in this episode has been brilliant. It's so different, it's so new, but it still feels like that kind of alien vibe and it feels very very dramatic as well especially in the well more dramatic scenes he has knocked it out of the park so far and don't even get me started on that new theme tune at the end Ooh, we are going very old school this time and it's amazing the number of times i went back and just played the credits so i can listen to it again and again and again and again i'm so excited to see what the title sequence looks like next week safe to say sagan's new music up big up Massive up. So when all was said and done and the Doctor and co were stuck in space, we got a very different sort of coming soon trailer at the end of the episode, which was a big montage of all the new guest stars appearing in series 11, which is something we've not seen before. Guest stars in Doctor Who get some fanfare, but nothing major, unless you're Maisie Williams, but her character was an absolute ass. Plus the trailer after all the guest stars showed us very little of the new series. That's kind of the best thing about all the trailers we've had so far for the series. We have no idea what's coming. Keep it that way. The number of things that got spoiled over the last 13 years due to trailers or announcements or just stupid leaks was far too many. I mean, imagine if we had absolutely no idea John Sim was gonna appear as the master at the end of series 10. But we knew, we knew. Keep us in the dark, BBC, up. So finally, when the Doctor is on the crane with Tim Shaw, she has this big old monologue about how we can honor who we've been, but we can choose who to be next. Now, this is very blatantly prodding the fact that she was cast, the fact that people should just accept her for who she is. And I can't really decide whether to give this an up or give this a down because it kind of felt a bit on the nose and a bit unnecessary. But then again, it's like, she has just regenerated. This is normally what the Doctor's like when they have regenerated. So I'm gonna give the power to you. Does that particular monologue, that particular scene deserve an up or a down? You'll have to let me know in the comment section down below. So there we have it. Doctor Who Series 11 is finally underway, and what an amazing start from Chris Chibnall, Jodie Whittaker, and the rest of the team. But what did you think? What did you think of The Woman Who Fell to Earth? You'll have to let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe to WhatCulture.com for more TV and film and Doctor Who content. I'm Rich from WhatCulture.com, and I'll see you next week. Bye.